We'll go back. I'm changing gears here a little bit. The uh, car is configured mostly for my preferences. And that includes uh, a certain minimalism. The car does have a front license plate, but uh, it's held on with uh, the bracket. It's held on with wing nuts. So I can uh, I can take the the uh, license plate off whenever I want and enjoy the uh, sorry about the camera work here <laughs> enjoy the front end uh, in a sort of clean minimalist state and I did the same thing with the wiper so the car normally doesn't run with a wiper now admittedly. Um, no, no front plate, no wiper, probably won't get me into trouble. But I thought it would be nice to be able to configure the, to configure the car so that it's completely road legal. So I have been working on a removable kit that fits in this uh, admittedly limited space in the rain train. That would include a wiper motor and a washer with a little pump and a little bottle and a horn. And this is all stuff that I didn't have from the original Scirocco and really wasn't suitable to adapt from the TT. The washer bottle and the TT was in the uh, fender in that area and it was quite large and it wouldn't fit in the Scirocco. And then the wiper motor assembly and all that stuff wasn't gonna fit in this uh, reshaped rain train. So I've been working on that. I will go downstairs in the shop and uh, video that. The big thing, the big compromise, is that I need a way to get the wiper through the cowl. So I did have to cut a hole in the cowl. And uh, when I run the wiper, obviously that won't be a problem. But if I don't run the wiper, I need a way to plug the hole. Not ideal, but Volkswagen has a precedent of doing that sort of thing. So here's a GTI that was built without a radio and it doesn't have a bespoke fender. They just put a plug right on the fender and they don't seem ashamed to do it. So I use that as a precedent. And the only difference is I used a magnet, so I can take it off easily without chipping the paint. So it's a magnet. I gotta polish it. Magnet with a little, uh, a little piece of plastic on it that I painted. And I've tested that at highway speeds. It does not fall out. And when I have the wiper on, I'll just take that out. And since it's a magnet, I'll store it on one of the brackets that holds the wiper. Now to power all that, obviously there'll be a ground, but this wire uh, will be the positive feed for it. And I want that uh, to be live only when the uh, ignition is on. So what I had done, when I deleted the wipers off the car, I did fix the windshield wiper stock so that it doesn't do anything except uh, run the uh, instrument panel functions. So this, this is fixed, it's rigid. So these I needed to keep for uh, this uh, multi-function display. So there's no wiring in there. But I did keep, pardon me. I did keep the uh, uh, socket wire, so you can see uh, sorry about that, it's hard to reach here. This wire here it goes into the rain frame and that socket is uh, 
attached to fuse number 24, which is a 20 amp feed, uh, which should be plenty. And if I remove the wiper, I can just unplug that wire and remove it so the car is back to my preferred minimalist state. And then if I want to hook everything up, I the, plug the wire in there and then it goes through a rubber plug that was already in the rain tray uh, bulkhead to feed it into the rain tray. So that's that. So I'm going to go downstairs and uh, we will resume with uh, what I've built down there. All right. Welcome to my laboratory. So this is everything that's required to make a little removable kit that fits in my rain tray. That includes the wiper motor, a little washer bottle and pump, a horn, and then uh, a little remote control so that I can uh, avoid integrating this into the car and use a key fob to control it all. And the basic purpose of that is to acknowledge that I have to bend the knee a little bit and follow the letter of the law, but also be able to psychologically think of the car as minimalist in the way I prefer so I can remove all this stuff easily and not leave any traces in the car. So I originally started with a, uh, my, uh, my first attempt was with a universal hot rod wiper motor, uh, such as you'd put on a 32 three window coupe hot rod, something like that. And it didn't have near enough torque. So I ended up having to discard that. And I got this, uh, it's made by, I think Wexco is the name wiper motor. So the whole kit is based on this thing and it's much sturdier. It's pretty compact. So it fits in my, um, reconfigured rain train. So you, you get basically the, the motor and gearbox here. It comes with an incorp it comes with a integrated shaft, drive shaft. And uh, the spline shaft drives a matching wiper, which is high quality, and it's steel. And it has a pinch bolt. The Allen head pinch bolt. And that fits uh, on the spline like that. I'll have my mono wiper. And uh, this motor, you can adjust the throw. I put it at 120 degrees, which is similar to what a Mark I mono wiper has. And I had the option to park it right or left, and I chose to park it left. Um, to take advantage of the... Um, it'll sweep in front of the driver better. The way a Mark I is, it sweeps better. It sweeps more fully in front of the passenger and leaves part of the driver's side unswept. Uh, so starting with the motor, then uh, this is an 11 gauge bracket that'll hold the motor to the car. Uh, it's got a 35 degree angle built into it because that's the angle of the windshield versus the angle of the cowl. So the shaft has to come through the cowl at 35 degrees. And then my son Luke 3D printed this uh, adapter, which fits through the hole in the cowl. I don't know if you can see it on the camera, but there's actually a portion of this thing engages the hole positively so there can't be any slippage. I think it shows it better on this side. So half of the lower part of the bushing goes into the top half and then half of the top part of the bushing goes into the lower half. It's pretty slick. And then that tightens down. And of course, that would bend the cowl if it were simply left like that. So the idea is to tie um, this bracket into the bottom of the rain tray. So it's got some studs welded to it. Those studs will grab. So this sits, this sits in the rain tray. And those studs will grab this bracket like that. And it's got slotted holes in it so that it meets the bottom of the uh, rain tray comfortably without straining the sheet metal of the cowl. And then this bottom part of the bracket will sit in the rain tray with slotted holes to allow some back and forth movement to not strain the 
cowl. And then these slots are actually not bolted directly to the ring tray, they're bolted to this lower bracket with these two studs. And this bracket is actually bolted to the ring tray and it has slots to allow right left movement so that when I tighten it all down, it doesn't strain the cowl. So all three degrees of uh, movement, uh, vertical, side to side, and then uh, back and forth, all have adjustability built in. This bolt here will hold this little fixture, which is akin to my GTI. It's the windows, it's the uh, windshield squirter, and there's no windshield squirter anymore on the hood. I deleted that. So this is like on my GTI. It's a tube that sprays from between, uh, it sprays from one of the hood slots. And that, uh, this bracket will bolt here. And then it has side to side adjustability so it can meet with the slot properly. And then it has uh, vertical adjustability by rotating that bolt. And this is all trial fitted before it's apart now because I was painting it. And then the washer nozzle is powered with this pump that I got on eBay. And then it's supplied by this small bottle. And uh, this bottle is uh, fed with, pardon me, a little uh, tube with a weight so it picks up uh, fluid from the bottom of the bottle and I don't have to worry about leaks. And then you just unscrew it to fill it, to fill it up. And then this bottle fits in this lower bracket. It's held by this clamp. And then these two bolts hold the pump to the front of the bracket. And then uh, this bolt here holds this tiny little horn, which I didn't think would do much, but it is loud. So uh, I'll bolt onto the front like that. And then all these items ground to this little uh, fixture here. And then these two bolts here hold this last assembly here, which is a fuse panel, a little fuse, dedicated fuse panel. The wire in the car under the dash is uh, has a 20 amp fuse, um, but I added these just as extra security. And then this here, this is two remotes uh, that are controlled with this key fob. And uh, Luke, my son, made me these little labels. It had A, B, C, D before. These are the various functions. Park. This is an interesting one. I didn't know this, but the parking feature of the wiper is not, quote unquote, off. It's actually a powered, um, it has a power wire. So, I took advantage of that and I actually have the option to turn that off and have the wiper stop where I want it to, uh, to sort of imitate uh, the vertical wiper that we used to do back in the day to keep it from flopping around. My GTI has a wing on the wiper, on the driver wiper to keep it from flopping at high speed. But you can't do that on a mono wiper because when it sweeps all the way over, the wing would be backwards and actually lift the wiper up. So we would just park the wiper vertically. So I have that option with this. And then by turning it back on, the wiper will park left. So that's uh, that bit there. And then this remote is under the cowl, but uh, might still get wet. So I made a little cover. The fuse panel came with a little plexi or a little acrylic cover and I just added to it. It's not completely waterproof and it can't be because I have these uh, vents that need to stay open, but it covers, covers the remote so that uh, if some water gets on the or gets inside the rain trail, it'll just rip off. So 
So I will assemble this all in the rain tray and uh, show how it all comes together. So here it is assembled in the car. So uh, washer bottle, here's the remote and the fuse panel under this cover, horn, pump. Original intent was to hold the pump with two bolts, but sadly in spite of all my planning, one of the bolts was in the way of the uh, bolt that holds it down to the rain tray. So I had to be able to move the pump aside there. Poor planning on my part, but it's still adequate. And this is the 11 gauge bracket that holds the motor. Very, very strong, I have to put that. And then the nozzle, when I originally planned to attach it to the bracket so I could take everything out in one piece, but it was hard to adjust, so I ended up Putting it on the uh, hood. So there's one more bolt I have to take off to delete everything. And then there's the pipe, and I put a little filter. I'm not sure that's necessary, but why not? And then here's how it all looks from the outside. So it's parked left, which is a little visually unexpected, but I looked it up, a Jaguar XKE from the 60s and a Singer Porsche 911 have their wipers parked left. So I'm gonna use that as a precedent. And here's the fixture that Luke printed me. That's good, I put a little rubber gasket on to make sure it doesn't scratch the paint. And we want to take the wiper off, this snaps up. There's the pinch bolt. And then here's how it all works. So it has to be ignition on. Here's the remote, so here's the horn. Here's the washer. Here's the wiper. So there you have it. The car's completely street legal this way. Even the emissions stuff. So if I attract undue attention, I won't get any additional tickets. So till next time.